Hello, today we are going to discuss the essay Freud and Literature written by Lionel Trilling. In this essay, Lionel Trilling writes about the effect that literature had upon Freud and the effect Freud had upon literature. So when Lionel Trilling begins this essay, he writes that there was a significant impact that uh, literature had upon Freud. Uh, and if we talk about the effect that Freud had upon literature, of course, even before Freud, there were many writers who had explored mind and the complications of mind. For example, Schopenhauer and uh, Nietzsche, they had uh, also explored these complications of mind, but they had never read Freud. Uh, Lionel Trilling writes that Freud uh, was a, and his psychoanalysis was a culmination of Romanticism because Romanticism was a zeitgeist which is a direction of thought. In the Romantic period, the mind was explored. So he writes that psychoanalysis is one of the culminations of the Romanticist literature of the 19th century. Then he writes that in showing the connection between Freud and this Romanticist tradition, it is difficult to know where to begin. But there might be a certain aptness in starting even back of the tradition as far back as 1762 with that dialogue of Diderot's called Rameau's Nephew. So uh, in this work called uh, Rameau's Nephew, um, there is a dialogue between Diderot and Rameau's Nephew. Uh, this work became very popular. Uh, Goethe translated it, Marx admired it, um, and um, Hegel praised and expounded it at length. Shaw was impressed by this work and Freud himself read it with the pleasure of agreement. So what was this work all about? The dialogue takes place between Diderot and a nephew of the famous composer. So the protagonist, the younger Ramu, is a despised, outcast, shameless fellow. Hegel calls him the disintegrated consciousness and credits him with great wit for it is he who breaks down all the normal social values and makes new combinations with the uh, pieces. As for Diderot, he is not as important as Ramu. Uh, Ramo's nephew, uh, he is what Hegel calls the honest consciousness and Hegel considers him reasonable, decent and dull. So Ramo is, um, uh, is lustful and greedy, arrogant yet self-abasing, uh, perceptive yet wrong like a child. Uh, so uh, Ramo represents the elements which dangerous but wholly necessary. He beneath the reasonable decorum of social life. So we find in Remo, what do we find in Remo? Freud's Eid. And we find in Diderot, Freud's Ego. So uh, as we see, uh, Freud and Romanticism uh, and we find the perception of the hidden element of human nature over here. And uh, if we explore the hidden element and the visible element of human nature, the idea of the hidden thing went forward to become one of the dominant notions of the age. The hidden element 
takes many forms and it is not always dark and bad. For Wordsworth, Coleridge and Blake, what was hidden and unconscious was wisdom and power. So this is the differentiation made between hidden and visible element. Visible, which is visible outside, hidden, which is hidden inside the mind. Then um, it's very important to understand that uh, with this exploration of the mind, some danger arose in the poets or writers who based their works merely on analytical reason because the mind was explored more now. And then uh, if we talk about um, the divisible mind, you know, the divisible mind which is um, that was also explored at that time um, I'll quote uh, we uh, find the energetic exploitation of the idea of the mind uh, as a divisible thing the part of which uh, one part of which can contemplate and mock the other so uh, Trilling gives example of the Stavarsky's work also because in Dostoevsky's work, uh, we find the divisible mind. And then Trilling talks about death wish. This death wish, uh, which even novelists, they are preoccupied with this notion of death wish. And Trilling says that this death wish is linked on the one hand with sleep and on the other hand with the uh, self-destructive impulses so uh, the perverse and the self-destructive impulses and um, uh, this leads to that fascination by the horrible which we find in Shelley, Poe and Baudelaire. Uh, Trilling also talks about the dreams our dreams which are like um, a second life and uh, this, uh, these dreams also become a part of the exploration of the mind. Then uh, Trilling talks about the effect that Freud had upon literature. He gives the example of Proust. Um, Proust um, explored so many complications of mind. He explored the sleep patterns of sexual uh, deviation of the ways of association the almost obsessive interest in metaphor uh, Proust explored all this but he never uh, read Freud okay so from here we come to know that uh, it was not necessarily Freud's ideas uh, that were adopted by writers. Uh, he also gives the example of uh, uh, T.S. Eliot's The Waste Land. Uh, T.S. Eliot's uh, Waste Land reads remarkably like the interpretation of a dream. Yet we know that Eliot's methods were prepared for him not by Freud but by other poets. So then next, uh, still um, Trilling says that Freud had a great influence on literature and it is uh, so pervasive that its extent is scarcely to be determined in one form or an another, uh, frequently in perversions or absurd simplifications. So uh, coming to the next point, um, he says, Trilling says that there were few writers who very seriously incorporated uh, Freud's uh, thoughts. So he gives the example of uh, surrealists. Uh, they depended upon Freud for the scientific sanctions of their program. Uh, then he talks about Kafka. Kafka um, has explored the Freudian conceptions of guilt and punishment. Uh, he talks about guilt and punishment of the dream and the fear of the father. These were the ideas of Kafka. And uh, then Thomas Mann. Um, Thomas Mann was always in the direction of Freud's interests. Uh, 
has been more susceptible to the Freudian in, uh, anthropology, uh, finding a special charm in the theories of myths and magical practices. Then James Joyce, with his interest in the numerous states of receding consciousness, with his use of words as things and of words which point to more than one thing, with his pervading sense of the interrelation and interpenetration of all things, and not least important, his treatment of familiar themes has perhaps most thoroughly and consciously exploited Freud's ideas. Thank you.